What's happening people, Michael Wyckoff here, and I'm gonna go through how I mapped my Tractor Z2 for Serato Scratch Live. And this was a special request for Willie Flowers, shout out to Willie Flowers, he wanted to know how I did it. And the second reason why I'm doing this is because when I wanted to learn how, there were a lot of videos on YouTube, but they were showing how they had already have it mapped and you could download the file, but not how to do it from beginning to end. And everybody's setup is gonna be different. Everybody's mapping is gonna be kind of different. That's the cool thing about customization. So I wanted to show you how you could go from beginning to end and have your own mapping for your own style so you don't necessarily have to use other people's file. As you can see, I've got mine set up. I'm running video on an OG SL1 box, Scratch Live, cue point setup. All right, so I've got it all mapped out and set up the way that I like it. But again, my setup is gonna be different from how you might wanna have your setup. So I'm gonna show you how to go through and map this for yourself so you can customize it however you like, all right? So first things first, make sure you have your Z2 and your Serato box plugged into your Mac or your computer before you open up the two programs because you're gonna to need to open up Scratch Live. You're also going to need to open up your Native Instruments controller editor, all right? And that's where a lot of the work is gonna come in because you're gonna do some pre-programming to make it seamless. So let's start with a new file. Go over here, pick new, and we'll just name it Serato Map. All right, now, what you're gonna do, and this is important because the way the Z2 is set up in Native Instruments, it's like it's the on, off button. And that's not gonna give you the response you want for say cue points or any of the button functions, on off functions in Serato. So what we have to do is we actually have to go in to a sign here, all right? And so for each one of our buttons that we wanna use in Serato, do you see the type is control change? We wanna change that to note. And then we wanna change the mode to gate, okay? Then you can go down here if you want. You can change the color. Um, I'll do purple so you can see it better on the screen. But now, it's set to purple. When I hit it, immediate response. Good to go, all right? You can do that for the rest of your buttons, you know, however you want to map it here. On my mapping, I have all five of these set as cue points. I have these buttons set as my in and out for when I want to set loops on the fly. I have this to cycle through my loops, left to cycle that way, uh, backward, right, forward. Then this is going to turn my loops on and off. So you have unlimited options as far as how you want to set up your buttons here. So once you have all that set up, and again, it's important that you have your buttons set up to note mode in your controller editor, then you're going to go back into your Scratch Live. You're going to go into your setup here and you're going to do a new mapping. Um, I have one set up. We're going to call this Mixer Z2. All right. I'm just going to load this. It's blank because I haven't really put anything on it yet. We're going to load that. You know it's loaded because it turns green. All right, that's your setup. So then you're going to go back in here. You're going to pick MIDI at the top, and then you're just going to start mapping. All right, so for my first cue point, I'm going to pick the first button that I have set. It'll turn green to let you know that you have that set there and you are set on your cue points and you're gonna go through the rest of your buttons just the same. Now for video, for setting my fader is also just as easy. You're gonna go down here, click your fader, and then just slide it back and forth. You'll see now that it responds. Put that away, and you got that set up just right there. Now, one thing I did for the Serato video that actually helped a lot is right here are your transitions and I actually have that mapped to my deck D button here so now I can actually cycle through my transitions just by a dial here 
which is really convenient, you know, for setup. But as you can see, you can set this up any way you want for your convenience and your style to fit how you're DJing. Once you've got it all MIDI mapped, you're just gonna cancel that, you're gonna turn your MIDI button off, go back into setup, and save your mapping, and you're gonna be all set to go. So now you've got your Z2 mapped completely through Scratch Live. You're set. So if you have any questions, anything that I missed, feel free to hit me up in the comments, send me a message, and I'll try to address it. I hope I covered it all. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Keep mixing. Peace.